a heart attack. Fast fatal heart impact. Past painful scars. In fact, I blast tasteful bars and past. I back up my actions. Fact, don't ask. Grab reactions. Jacked attack with every word. Then act with class as they hear me snap. I got nothing to lose. Cause I fought and felt the bruise. Now I'm not the one confused. Call the shots and they produce. I ain't boss. I'm finally loose. Pick a new soul bird's juice. I need the views to boost me to a new abuse of being used. Everybody wants a piece now. Y'all can rest in peace now. You're dead to me, so peace out. Remember you're discreet now. Get ready for defeat. Alrighty, hello, hello everybody, this is Kirusho here, and now, before we do begin, I know a lot of you guys are looking at this mini shot and asking exactly what this series may be about, Unheard Threat. Now, I'm not going to lie to you guys, I was sort of inspired by the movie Bird Box, and even the My Zombie Academia story I did do, and I was thinking about exactly what I could do to make a series sort of similar to Bird Box, but not just directly just saying, oh yeah, hey, here's a Bird Box story. I thought about how I can make it a bit more interesting or at least change some things up to make it a bit more original. So that's how this idea did come about. Now, obviously, we're going to be changing a few things. And right now, we'll pick up with Azuka Midoriya. And we'll start about at day zero. So the day everything was going to be going to shit. Now, Izuka Midoriya, he had a normal day at school. It was a little bad and things, they were strange to say the least, but they weren't out of the ordinary. I mean, he went to school, he did what he needed to, he went through his classes, he got some shit from Kachan and she was annoying, but that's about it. Now, Deku came home, had dinner, and someone was trying to relax. And there was actually whenever Deku, he just started to feel a bit weird. He was laying in his bed and thinking. And right now, he was going over a lot in his head. I mean, he wants to get in the UA and he's training with All Might. I mean, obviously this is going to be strange, right? Well, I mean... It's not that bad, is it? Okay, so... What should he do? Hmm, okay. Should he call All Might and just ask him to pass down the power now? Would that be... Bad, or would it be good? I mean... Okay, so... Let's see, focus. You go into UA next week. He doesn't want you to take the power on until next week. Okay. So... What are we going to do, Izuku? Come on. Think, think. How do you bring this up to him? How do you... They go hearing something. And he's kind of caught off guard by it. That sounded loud. And it was coming from outside. Okay, that's a little weird. I'm going to stand up. And he does go to walk towards his door and he does go to open it. Him walking to the living room and looking around. As there's the kitchen light on. Mom? Do you just gonna call out? Him walking over to it. And he does gonna step inside. As Inko, she's currently standing at the counter, shopping away at something. And Deku, he does gonna feel somewhat relieved. Oh, uh, Mom, what are you doing up? I thought you went to bed already. Oh no, Izuku. I'm, um. I'm just in the middle of something right now. Uh. In the middle of something? Yes, it's perfectly fine. I'll be done with it soon, and then maybe. I should go out for a walk. A walk? Yeah, Izuku, it's just, um. Are you feeling fuzzy at all? Fuzzy? What do you mean? Fuzzy how? Now, Deku is going to walk forwards. Him ask his mom what she means by fuzzy. Hmm? You haven't... You haven't heard it? Her going to fully face Deku. And the moment she has to turn around with that knife in her hand, he does going to see exactly what his mom might have been cutting. As Inko, she's staying there with a normal look on her face. No signs of pain and no... difference. And that knife she has is covered in blood. 
and her other hand, it's missing fingertips. And even partially parts down to her actual palm. Holy shit. Mom, are, are you okay? Christ, what were you doing? There goes stepping forwards. Whenever he does directly go to walk over to it, he does see the cutting board. It's soaked in blood and... Well... Yeah, that's pretty disgust disgusting. Okay. Okay, Mom, listen, we gotta wrap your hand up. We need to take you to a hospital right now. Izuku, I'm fine, but... What do you mean you haven't been hearing it? Now, Deku did try to calm her down. She's in shock. That's it, right? Okay, we need to go to the hospital right now. Then everything will be... This being where the building does not shake. And the moment it does, Deku just goes to someone falling forward towards his mom. As in Ko, she does someone just go to move to the side and shake. Now, Enko falls down to her left whenever she had tried to move. And Deku, yeah. After Enko does hit the ground and try to get back up, Deku, he does so first. As he does go to run towards the door and find out what happened. The moment he runs out of his apartment, he does see a few things going on. Out in the distance, there's... There's fires. There are fires. Wait, that doesn't make sense. What's going on? Him looking around. Void is going to look directly over the side and see if there's a fire down below them. It's in the apartment below. What? That's got to be the third, fourth floor. Okay, why? That doesn't make sense. What's going on? Now, Deku is going to try and look around more. As something does fly directly past him, and he does go to look down, as he does see somebody hit the ground. And the moment he realizes it was a person, he does go look up again, as another person is going to fly down, and Deku is going to back away. Jesus Christ. Okay, um, are you okay, Izuku? Deku backing up into his mom, as she's staying there still holding the knife and her hand isn't wrapped up yet okay mom we gotta get you to a hospital you're in shock izuku i'm fine in fact i haven't felt better her gonna step past him and going to someone to turn around to lean against the wall asking izuku exactly why he's freaking out so much mom how are you not you chopped off your fingers. And two people just jumped. I mean, look. Now, Inkoda's going to turn her head and look down. Her is leaning backwards to do so. And Deku is going to reach out to try and grab for his mom. However, Deku, he does going to look directly back towards her where she's going to turn and just going to directly smile at him before going to shift all of her body weight backwards. Now, the smiles will caught Deku off guard. He didn't know what to say to that. She just... She acted like this was normal. Like this was just something typical. But she just... She just jumped. And she acted like this was normal. Yeah. Deku, he's freaking out. This is not making sense. And then there's where he does start to hear some screaming. And it sounds loud. It just sounds annoying, so irritating. Now, Deku, he does listen. The sound gets higher and higher. And then he does start to hear ringing in his ears. And Deku, he does go to try and run. Okay, okay, there's a problem here. There's a problem. Okay, what to do, what to do? Uh, Bakugo, Bakugo. She's got to know what's going on here. Now. Deku does go to run down the staircase. As already he does so, Bakugo, she is directly down the hall. Right now she does come running around the corner with a bloody wound in her shoulder. And right now Deku does go to directly look towards her. The moment she is going to see him, she does go running towards him. And Deku, he does ask her what's happening. Okay, so do you have any idea what's going on? I was hoping you would. Where's your mom and dad? 
my my mom, she just, she, okay, Izuku, listen, something weird is happening. Mom, she, my mom, she just, she just, I, I don't even, she just lit herself on fire. What? What about your dad? Dad, he, he's not himself anymore. Something's wrong. Okay. We gotta run. We gotta hide. He, he's gone fucking loony. Now, Deku does gonna look up. As whenever he does get to look back down the hallway, there's Masaru. He's walking towards him with a knife in his hand. And Deku, he just doesn't know what to do. Him going to at least reach out and grab Bakugo's shoulder, pulling her back up the stairs. And the moment they do go to get halfway up the staircase, Masaru is charging forwards. Him trying to get close to them. By the time he's up the staircase, Bakugo and Deku are back towards his apartment. And when they do go to run inside and lock the door, there is actually Bakugo. Who the first thing she does notice is a trail of blood leading to the kitchen. And she does actually try to ask where Auntie is. Hmm? <laughs> My mom, she, she just, over the side, people were just going and she, she just, I, I don't, Izuku, something is happening to people. I don't know what's going on, but they're talking about a sound. Have you been hearing anything? No. My mom mentioned that, but they're being allowed to thud on the door. And Deku doesn't look directly at it. There's a knife in there. It's shining, and it's, well, got some red on it. Oh, shit. Okay, is there a way out of here? There's not a window, is there? Um, there is, but it just leads out to a patio. Okay, better than nothing, we need to leave now. We need to leave? I, I don't think that's possible. Jumping to the other patio, it would fuck us up, wouldn't it? Isuku, if you hold on to me, and I actually use my power, we can get across. Or we can at least go below, go to a floor below, and start running. I, I don't know. Okay. I'm freaking out too. And right now, I'm thinking about how I just watched my mom light herself on fire. Okay. Okay, fine, fine. I'll try to be calm too. But I just watched my mom cut off her fingers and throw herself over the side with a smile. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. No. Deku does hear Mosro scream. As Mashiro, he does get directly stab the knife into the door again. And right now, Deku is trying to make a bit of a plan. He has an idea, right? Mashiro, he's, well, crazy, right? He's not in his right mind? Right. So, what should we do? We gotta trick him, right? Um, okay, uh, hang on. Deku's plan is somewhat simple. Him running over to the counter, grabbing a cup, and going to go grab a glass of water. Him then going to reach towards the counter and reach for a knife on the block. Him grabbing one as he does just want to not have to use this. Okay, this is a backup plan. Now, Deku is going to run back over towards the door. Him going to throw down the water. As Mashiro, he does actually go to try and bring up his hand to... Stab towards the door again. This time, he's actually able to get a bit more through. Him actually wanting to reach his hand in forcibly and cut it up very badly on the wood. As a few pieces of it do actually stab into his arm. Him reaching inside, he wanted to directly twist the lock. And the moment he does, he's going to somewhat step backwards, pulling his hand out. Before going to directly charge the door. Now, he charges right in. Him rushing in and stepping into the puddle. As the moment he does, he does go somewhat slip. Him trying to regain his balance as Deku and Jerky charge Masaru. Now, Bakugo, she has watched this. Deku and Jerky does go to charge forwards and into her dad. Him actually going to directly smash him over and against the wall. 
Now, Deku hits him right up by the door. Mashiro's shoulder actually smashing the door frame as his hand is going to let go. And the moment that, is, that does actually happen, Deku and Mashiro do start to fight. Now, there is Bakugo. She's still trying to process what happened. Her mom just so casually just opened a bottle of perfume, poured it over her head, and grabbed a match. She grabbed a match. She was burning like a candle for about, what, a few seconds? And then she started to scream. It's like she just clicked back into Sandy after she checked out. It doesn't make sense. Now, there is actually Deku. Deku and Monstro, they're fighting. And Monstro, he's a wild animal. Right now, a lot's happening. He's completely feral, and Deku, he is strong. But Monstro, he's stronger. Now, the two are able to throw each other around for a minute. And Monstro, after knocking Deku across the face a few times, and even just trying to attack him, he does keep trying to go for the knife. And Deku, he actually is able to stop him. Whenever he actually did try to prevent him from doing this, he did so and think about pulling his own. However, Monstro, he needs to be restrained. That's it. If he had a superpower right now, this would work. Okay. Now, there is actually Bakugo, who after Monstro, he did go to try and charge Deku and get past him, back into the, back into the apartment, Deku, he actually was able to bring his hand up. Him grabbing Monstro, as Monstro does go to someone spin a turkey punch Deku. Now, Monstro, he does immediately go to charge forward for his Deku and go to throw him back against the area, looking out. As Deku, he's trying to fight against his power. Now, Monstro is trying to push Deku over the side. And at this point, he doesn't seem to care if Monstro goes with him. Now, Bakugo does see this as Deku does someone shout for help. And the moment he does, Bakugo just tries to charge in. Now, she does go go to directly blast into her dad's back. Her using a smaller explosion as Monstro, he does want to scream out at that and let go of Deku. Deku going to throw out his hand and grab directly at his side and go to someone scoot himself to the left as he does go to directly turn and try to punch Monstro across the face. Now, Monstro, he does go to directly try and grab towards Bakugo. Him not even trying to pay attention to Deku anymore. As wherever Deku actually is going to directly hit him, he does sock him across the head. And Monstro, he does someone go to slump down into his left. Him going against the wall and falling directly over the side. And when that happens, Deku, he does stand there with his fist out. And, well, a bruised and bloody face. And Bakugo, she is just going to look towards that direction. Ma Masaru, her dad, he just, he's gone. And Bakugo just going to look directly towards Deku. He, he pushed him over. I, I just, I, I didn't mean for him to go. Now, Deku just going to step forwards and look over the side, confirming what he thought along with even seeing his mom. Him bring his hand up as Bakugo does not go to step forwards. They could go to turn and directly tell her to not do that. I I have to know. Is he... He's dead, Bakugo. I'm sorry. Mom's dead too. I, I just... I only meant to knock him out in the ground. He, he went over. You saw. He, he stepped back. I saw that... Izuku, are, are you, I, I killed your dad. No, 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 no. He was already crazy. But is he, is he moving? No. Deku, he does want to look back over the edge. After a minute of trying to compose himself. And he doesn't just to say the words, no. And he does at least go to recognize a few other things. 
There are a lot more bodies down there. And whenever Bok go, she does look out. She has a skirt of someone asked like exactly how many. As she see that there are people still jumping from other buildings. Now, Bako, she does so, someone try to pull Deku inside. Them almost slipping over the puddle that they use as a trap. And Deku, he is sat down. He's trying to process what he just did. And right now, Bako, she's trying to process what she saw. And the two, they do try to turn on the news. As the news, it's fuel blown, fuel, mm, full blown insanity. Now, Deku, he does see. Right now, the world, it's quite literally ending. I mean, there are people jumping. There are reports of just rapid murders and riots, and it's just fuel blown insanity. This is the end of the world. And everyone's talking about a buzzing sound. This can't be right. Um, this is bad, right? It's, it's not right. It, it, this isn't possible. This is a nightmare, right, Bakugo? I, I don't know. Are, are we going to be okay? Are we going to get through this? I'm I'm not sure. What what about what about the heroes? They they can stop this, right? I I, I hope so. Because otherwise, what are we gonna do? My my mom, she, my dad, and auntie. Now, Baku is not tearing up. And so is Deku. Right now, both the two, yeah. They are barely safe. The door is left in ruins. And right now, they need to try and survive. They don't know what they're going to be dealing with. I mean, they literally just watched dozens of people die. And the world, it's in chaos. If it's like this everywhere, then what's going to happen next? Now, that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed.